Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Wally, this is my onesie, and this is the true cost of home ownership. So uh, I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time now, and I think it's one of those valuable pieces of information that a lot of people are not well educated on, um, but a piece that I think is very vital, especially if you're looking to buy a home. So today I wanted to kind of give my take on what the true cost of home ownership is, just from my experience. Um, and I wanted to cover it in, under these uh, four categories here. Uh, the first one being cost, the, the actual cost of the home, the mortgage payment, which is the monthly payment that you pay, closing costs, uh, and then random recurring and miscellaneous costs that you may not be thinking about, but some things that are important to uh, factor in and keep in mind. Um, I am currently under contract for a home in Florida, so I have a loan disclosure here and uh, I'm planning on using some of the metrics in there to give you an idea of uh, one example and obviously it's going to be different depending on the area and uh, what kind of property you're looking at, but again, it's just one uh, example here that we can use. So the first is the cost. So uh, in this case, we're looking at a $255,000 home. Now. Although this is the you know sticker price on the home, it's not the actual cost because there's a lot of things we have to factor in. One, um, I'm not rich. I don't have $255,000 sitting in my bank account, so I can't go out right and pay it, um, which requires me to go get a mortgage. Now, when you look at a mortgage, the first big thing you have to consider is the interest rate. And it's probably uh, something you've heard a lot about on the news lately. Now, in this case, we were able to get a 2 point eight seven five percent interest rate so that's going to be the interest rate on the loan that we get from the bank to be able to purchase this home um, and then one thing to note on your mortgage here when you typically google your mortgage payment you're only going to see a number that covers your principal and interest so the principal is money that's going towards the value of the home uh, towards that 255 and then the interest is going to be um, money that goes to the bank, which is basically your cost to be able to borrow that money. And in this case, it is, let me pull that actual loan disclosure here, um, $1,005. Now, one thing to be aware of here, when you're looking at a mortgage payment, that $1,005 is not gonna be your monthly cost. You also have to add in additional things like your taxes and insurance, which are held in something called escrow, which is an, a fund that your lender or bank will create for you to be able to pay these miscellaneous costs. So they'll be the ones that pay off your insurance every year, and they'll be the ones that pay your property taxes every six months. So that's one thing you gotta factor in here, your escrow, and that's your taxes and insurance. So in this example here, our taxes are, um, where are they? $405. They don't have it broken out. It's just the escrow amount total is $405. Um, so already our monthly payment has pretty much increased by almost uh, 40% just to when factoring in those uh, additional costs. So that's something you got to be aware of. Another thing to uh, factor in, I'm not rich, so I only put down five, or I'm only putting down 5% instead of uh, the typical 20% for uh, a conventional loan. So because I'm only putting down 5%, I also have to pay something called mortgage insurance. Now that's insurance that the lender gets to cover themselves in case I decide to default on the loan or I'm unable to make the payments. In this case, it's $91 a month. Now, this will go away eventually when my equity reaches 20% or higher, um, or I can refinance later if I think my property value is appreciated. So uh, with these three things factor in, that brings our actual monthly cost to $1,501. Now keep in mind, uh, everything here is subject to change, for example, Taxes and insurance could change depending on where you're at. If your city charges more, um, or if you know you're at the beach, for example, and you have to have higher insurance premiums because uh, of hurricanes and whatnot. And if you have bad credit, your mortgage insurance could be even higher. So all these things are fairly in, in custom to the, each individual on in different areas. 
but in this case, uh, to get this $255,000 home, after putting down 5%, um, our monthly cost is $1,501. So what we've done up to this point is pretty much figure out our monthly cost. Now this is a good way to determine affordability, to be able to see what kind of home can you buy at what price point. But the next big one is closing costs. And in my personal opinion, I think this one right here is the biggest barrier to entry because it requires a lot of upfront capital to be able to put down a down payment and pay all the miscellaneous fees that you have to be able to close and actually complete a transaction when it comes to real estate. So I just wanted to kind of go over some of the different costs here and what they're uh, looking like in this specific scenario for this $255,000 home. Um, so I'm not gonna break them out onto the whiteboard because there's pretty much a lot of them, but I'll show you the different buckets and I'll try to add them here after editing. So the first one is origination fees. So think of this as um, just administrative fees, overhead, things that uh, the lender needs just to continue their operations. Um, so here they're showing admin fee, electronic docs fee, processing fees, just random fees. I don't think they need all these, but that's what they charge. Um, and in this case, they're charging a thousand five hundred and twenty dollars. Now, if uh, you decided to pay for points, then that would also fall under origination fees. Points are essentially ways to buy down your interest rate. So here we have a 2.875 rate, but let's say the interest rate that they gave me initially was 3%. They may offer you to pay extra up front, which is what's called points, to be able to reduce that interest rate to let's say 2.75 or whatever that rate and offer is. Um, and if you did that, that would go into origination. In this case, we don't get just the admin and processing fees. Then we have the appraisal. Now this is for the lender to have an appraiser come out, take a look at the property and say, yeah, this home actually is worth 255,000 or not, for example. And if it's not, then typically your lender will not want to give you a loan for that amount because you're buying an asset that's not worth uh, the amount of money you're borrowing. So in this case, it's $450 for that appraiser. And you know, different areas may have different fees for their appraisers, this is just an example. Um, then there's a bunch of random services that they add on, and again, I'll break those out later in editing, but we're just gonna call it services here for now. And this is $1,400. A lot of these are not really to your benefit at all, it's just random fees that you have to pay to uh, you know, complete the transaction. In real estate then here we have uh, tax fees not to actually be confused with actual taxes this is just fees to be able to transfer um, the actual taxes over to you and things like recording fees in this case it's 1557 and then we have prepaids so this one um, covers things like insurance and taxes ahead of time because insurance is typically paid a year in advance. So if you're going to close on a property, for example, tomorrow, you're going to pay for insurance now to cover you for the next year. So this would be uh, paid at closing. So it's part of closing costs. Then there's also taxes. Then there's also your prepaid interest. So in my case, the closing date's March 2nd. So, uh, I have to pay taxes to cover the rest of that month because mortgage payments are typically paid after the month. So in this case, I have 30 days of interest that I have to pay for at uh, $19.34 per day. So that plus the insurance quote that they gave me, we're gonna have $2,080. Now this isn't a fixed rate because this is uh, factoring in an insurance estimate that they came up with. Um, I'm still shopping around for insurance, so that's going to fluctuate based off of the actual quotes that I get. Uh, but this is just an estimate, and this is what they gave me so far. Then we have the initial escrow. Uh, this, is uh, this is basically to fund the initial escrow balance. Like I said, this goes towards things like your taxes and insurance but they wanna have some reserves and some funds already ahead of time 
for when your taxes and insurance payments come due. So in this case, they're taking three months of home insurance in advance, as well as property taxes. Um, in this case, four months in advance of property taxes. And again, this is just an estimate from uh, their insurance estimate that they came up with. But in total, it's $14.95. The last piece here under closing is going to be probably your biggest expense, and that is the down payment. So this is how much money are you going to put down towards your loan. In my case, I put 5% down, so that gives us a total of... Um, <laughs> $12,745. Now this is the down payment that's based off of this initial cost up here. So when we looked at the mortgage for the loan, it was off of 255,000 minus the down payment because we're only paying the mortgage for how much we owe on the loan. Now with all that, that brings our grand total to $21,000 in foreclosing costs and then out of that 8502 is just the random fees that are being charged and also the prepaids and then the rest is the down payment now fortunately for me i was able to negotiate and have the seller pay seven thousand dollars of my fees um which is a really nice perk. And then I'm also getting $346 in lender credits. Um, that's not really that significant when you're looking at this kind of total, but it's still better than nothing. And um, I also had to put down a earnest deposit, which is a deposit, uh, essentially a good faith deposit that I'm not gonna back out of the deal for no reason when I made the offer with the seller. So, um, with that, um, I put down 2,500, so that's also gonna go back towards closing costs. So when I go to close, what I have to bring with me is $11,401 um, to be able to actually complete the transaction. And then after that's done, all I will owe is $1,501 per month. Um, you know, unless taxes go up, insurance changes, and then eventually if my uh, PMI drops. Now, um, for the sake of this though, you still gotta consider this as your closing cost though, because um, you know, not every seller is gonna offer you seller credit, and not every lender is gonna give you any sort of lender credit. So really our closing cost in total is this. Um, just pretty hefty, and this is why the barrier to entry when it comes to real estate can be fairly high. All right, so now that we've got all these uh, kind of calculated out, um, the next and last category here is recurring and miscellaneous expenses. So this is going to be things like if you have a homeowners association, uh, you gotta factor that in. Um, if you have utilities, um, you're gonna pay utilities regardless of where you are, but if you decide to buy a house, for example, your utilities may be higher than if you were in an apartment where they're either subsidized or shared. Um, across all the people living in that apartment. You might have lawn care, regular recurring maintenance, uh, but then under miscellaneous, I think the big one to factor in is random damage that you can't really forecast, but you always wanna be uh, financially prepared for. So this is one of those things where just assume something's gonna go wrong and just hope it doesn't. Um, but if it does, you should have reserves. Um, in my case, I had, um, about a year into my ownership of this current home, I had a pipe burst because we have a lot of freezing temperatures here and it flooded my basement. Now, fortunately, my insurance was able to cover that claim, but I had to pay a $2,000 deductible. Now that's $2,000 that, you know, it's hard to budget in here, right? Because you can't forecast these sort of things, but it's nice to be able to be ready for them and financially prepared just in case. Um, but um, I think, I hope, that this kind of gave you a pretty good idea of some of the expenses to look out for when you're buying a home. And keep in mind that this is just one example and every scenario is different, but I think the general theme and idea is going to be the same. 
So thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked this and uh, please consider liking and subscribing for more.